All right, so let's look at the uh, uh, the next example. So for this example, uh, I want to have some uh, speed control, as you can see here. Not only I want to extend and retract the cylinder, I want to have uh, the uh, slowly extend or slowly retract, depend on the uh, uh, applications. So in order to do that, we have to add more component. So the component we, we use for this purpose is called one-way flow control one. Flow control, that means you uh, restrict the air flow through the valve in turn to control the speed. All right. So on this diagram, we already know that, right? This is the push button valve. This is a single acting cylinder. We already understand that. So for this valve, you can see it goes in on this port. And I have the uh, illustration on the right hand side. All right. So let's look at those two uh, enlarged picture on there, right? So um, I think I'll sh sh it's better to show you from the top on here. So you can see here, depends on the connection, all right? So if you have the air going in from the top, trying to go through the valve, go through here in this way, you can see the color, right? So that's the high, pre high uh, pressure air, and that will push those two, those two right parts. It's a um, you, call, you can call that diaphragm, or you can call the uh, uh, flippers, right? It's almost like a uh, a door, right? The uh, a swing door, right? So you can see when the air push that will open the door and go through this, and pretty much no restriction goes through the valve. So that means when you have the air from the top to the bottom, right? If you go in the air this way no restriction, right? So that, this symbol shows that, right? So you can you can imagine this ball, right? The, uh, trying to block the air, but when you have the air from the top to the bottom, you can blow that away, right? So that's uh, the this direction. But on the other direction, so when you have the opposite from, if you're trying to have the air flow from the bottom to the top, then that's the the another illustration out here. So you can see the arrow, high pressure air going through here, and then you can see the uh, those two flipper because there's a the different direction that basically block those two uh, two paths on here, right? So you can see that those two paths are being blocked, but in the middle you do have a little bit of opening. But that depends on this, on this needle. So you can turn around this screw to adjust the opening on here. If you look at here, there's some. You could have a opening on here, or if you turn a screw, make the opening narrow, then there will be less air to flow through to go through the top. So that's why it's called one-way control. Right? There's no restriction from the top to bottom. But from the uh, the bottom to the top, there will be some restriction on there. So in this way, uh, when the, when you have the air flow from bottom to the top, so that means you're trying to extend the cylinder. So that will depend on how do you adjust this represent adjustment. How do you adjust the valve? Right. So that's see the operation on the circuit. Okay, let's look at here, play the video. So let's build on previous. This is the flow control wall. This is being blocked. And this is a P port. And this is another port called A port. And that right now I'm showing you the, uh, the screw, right? You need to know there's a locking knot, knot at, the, at the bottom. It's called locking knot, right? So Sometimes if you don't pay attention on there, it won't be able to turn in on there because you, you already locked the position. You need to release that so now you can turn on the top. Right? You need to be careful with that to turn 
uh, different directions. So right now I'm opening, I right? opening the restriction, and then I can insert that into circuit. Right. So you can do the same way to clamp in there. So from the bow, come out, then go into the P ports. Uh, oh, uh, I'm going to here. Right. So let's look at. Yeah, that's right. So that's the A port going to the cylinder from the valve going to the P port. So now I turn on the air. So you can see that's the normal operation. Now I can start to turn the screw. Then you can see it's the extent ex the the yeah the advanced speed is being slowed, right? You can see it right now very very slow because I'm turning the screw on here, right? That depends on the connect connection. If I swap those two connections, imagine that that will control the retract speed. So let me show you on here. Then extend very fast. And then when I release the uh, the button, that doesn't even go back, right? So I need to open a little bit. You can see that's very slow, right? Extend very quickly and retract very slow. So that really depends on which way you connect the valve, right? So that's why we call one-way flow control valve. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay. So on this slide, uh, I'm showing you that in addition to the speed control, so the one I use the uh, one-way flow control wall, right, to control the speed. Also, we can have some complicated circuit to build on uh, with the different logic. So first, uh, there are two basic logics. All right, so one is called OR logic. So that is implemented by a special valve. This valve you can see uh, has three ports, right? So you can have this one go in and this one go in either way, and then this middle one come out. So we call that OR gate. The reason for that is if either one of them, the port from left or from the right, either one of them come in and the air will go out from the middle. So you don't have to have both on. Only one of them should be good. So you can see uh, we have two identical valve on here to control this, right? So that means, for example, you, you have uh, a cylinder you can control in two different locations. On each side of the machine, you can extend on this. Or if you walk to the other side of the uh, machine, you can also use the other button to do the same thing, right? So this is the OR gate. Then if you look at the right hand side, this this is different from uh, the OR gate, right? This is called end logic, end gate. End gate, that means you have to have both uh, both way to be present to present in the same time in order to have this one come out. So that's the different logic, right? So if you look at those two valves. This one is just a push button. We already understand that. And this one is a little bit different. You can see the symbol represent a, some sort of a, a circle, right? So that's actually is called roller, right? Roller lever valve. And that is a special type of, of valve and we use for the automation, right? So you can see uh, the push button is like a menu control with this valve we can pick up the position with the cylinder, right? So imagine you can see here, according to the diagram on here, this is 1.5, then that represents the position of the valve. And this is the detailed symbol for 1.5. And let me uh, clear, clear up the, uh, the diagram. Okay, so this is at the retract position of the cylinder. So that means it's being activated if cylinder at the retract position. But because this is an end, right, you only have one side that will not have this one come out. It's waiting for this, waiting for you to press the button. So when the moment when you press button, you have a both side present, and then you have air come out on here, then that will start to extend cylinder. 
So when you start to extend cylinder, that will go out, and then 1.5 will be deactivated. And that will in turn come back on here to switch to this position, cut off. So this will block this side. And then the end logic will not be meet on here. So you don't have the end logic anymore. So that's why you don't have air when you start to extend the cylinder. There's no air keep going with the cylinder. So the cylinder will automatically return because of the spring. So once it's returned to the retract position, because if you're holding the button, you're going to have air come out again. So you can imagine the result will have some automatic movement. All right, I will not, uh, I can show you later, but I don't want to tell you now. I want you to look at by yourself, all right? So let's look at the demo for the next slide. Let's play on that. So this is, you can see the symbol on here, right? So this is the end, right? This is now the or. So add it on here. So now I can remove the one-way flow. It's already done. We don't need that anymore, right? So, so that's the output, and that's one end of the end logic, right? So you can see three ports, right? I have two of them connected. This is the push button. There's one uh, not being connected. So this is the roller lever, right? So you can see that's being. It's almost like a push button, right? Two ports. Right, so I can just temporarily put it over there. I let you over there. It's screwing there. Then for those two ports, I can connect the P port, which is at the bottom, to the supply. That's what I'm doing right now. And then from the top, that's the working port, right? And that will go into the the other uh, unconnected port on the end logic. So when I turn on the air, you can see when you press button, you cannot extend. When you press the lever, a roller, it doesn't move, right? It's end logic. You have to have a both, right? Both present in the same time to extend the cylinder. So now I am follow the diagram. I will install this at the retract position of the cylinder. So you can see I relocate that to the retract side, the roller will be pushed by the cylinder head. All right, so uh, I'll tell you a little bit of uh, uh, trouble to fix the, the valve. You can see it's not uh, securely tidied up. All right, but it's okay. I can still uh, show you the operation on it. So, yeah, took me a while to uh, fix that. So now, if I press, you see that. So that's what we call oscillate. Because it has many uh, operation, right? Continue operation. It will extend and retract. Uh, after retract, will extend again, right? If you understand the logic. So I have a little bit of trouble with the uh, uh, roller valve, but uh, it's okay. It's it's, uh, uh, it's something. Yeah. So right now I'm using a different one. Because I have to hold the button in order to see the operation. Now I'm switching to a uh, selector switch, right? So selector switch has a maintain, right? Has a maintain function, so I can see that. And then uh, you can see, you can see that fall off. But uh, uh, once I hold it, temporarily hold it, right? So you can see that, right? I turn like it's almost like a turn on the machine. When I move the roller, you can see the cylinder. Right, it has a different positions. We can see that, right? All right, so it's a, a little bit fun, right? So you can see we use only a little bit, uh, 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 two, three parts. We can uh, build a, some interesting circuit. Right? It's almost like a, a machine or automated uh, movement, right? Okay, so uh, let's look at the the. Hydraulic. So so far, everything I show you is uh, pneumatic, right? So with hydraulic, like I said, it's the uh, hydraulic oil we use to.
to transmit power. So uh, this is the the unit we have on the trainer, right? So this is the symbol uh, to represent the uh, this whole power pack, which we call hydraulic power pack, right? It has two ports, P port and T port. Um, okay, you know what? Uh, maybe I can just stop here. Uh, I'll continue for maybe this video that's a little bit long. So uh, that's why uh, I have to maybe make another one. All right, so. Okay, let's continue from the previous video. So from uh, the uh, hydraulic power pack, you can have two ports. One is the P port, so, that, so that's where the hydraulic oil come out from the supply. And then that, I believe, is on this side. So that's one of the port, on P port. All right. And then there's one, it's called T port, called tank. And that, I think you can see here, a little bit of mark on the um, uh, machine, it has a T. So this port is the T port. So that's the two ports. And this one, we don't use it. Uh, it's called storage, uh, that's S, right? So that's somewhere around here. Uh, that's uh, this is not our concern for now, all right? So with those two ports, uh, internally, uh, you, you have a motor, so that represents a, a circle rotary motor, right? So that's inside a tank, all right? And then motor will have the mechanical link to drive a pump, uh, similar to the water, uh, water pump, right? So you can see here it's a triangle. If it's hollow, it's air. But right now it's solid. That represents it's a oil, hydraulic oil. And then at the bottom, you see here, this is a, like a tree. This symbol represents the whole tank, all right? So this is the tank, and this is the motor on here, electric motor. And then the pump is inside the tank, all right? So this is the uh, construction, uh, the, uh, the components of this power pack. And once the pump get the oil come out, eventually will go through the people come out, but there's some control inside, right? So the reason for that is hydraulic has a high pressure uh, range, so we want to have a safety. And you can see here, this is a pressure gauge and meter to represent, to let you to monitor the pressures in, in, within your system. And this one we'll talk about a little bit more, right? Uh, not, but not, uh, not too much details uh, on today. So the reason for that, I just want you to know that this diagonal, uh, the, uh, the arrow represent here, this knob, you can adjust. So that means you can adjust the uh, the internal path of the wall if it's away from here, and then it's blocked. And then the oil will come out from the power pack. But if you adjust this to make this go along to the right hand side, so that will have a pass, go back to the tank directly. So with this shortcut, will be not much oil or even the, no, no more oil come out from the P-port. So that means you can protect with the high pressure, you can protect the power pack. So you don't have the, have a extreme high pressure come out. All right. So again, on the lecture, uh, I'm going to talk about more uh, with the detail. But for now, I just want to show you a interesting uh, hydraulic circuit, so you can see the difference compared with pneumatic. So let's look at the next slide. Uh, this is a uh, circuit. Uh, we, I use hydraulic. You can see here it's a bigger pipe, right? So that's a high pressure oil, and then this equipment I have on here, this component is called a uh, hydraulic motor. So same as pneumatic, uh, it can drive the cylinders with hydraulic, but also uh, same thing for pneumatic, you can also drive another type of rotary uh, movement uh, called motor, right? So again, we'll talk about more. I said, so for now, we can just watch the, uh, the video. 
So that's the motor can turn around. You can see here. Hopefully, uh, you can see here. Maybe I can zoom in later. So you have two pipes, two ports connect to the motor. Then those are the two ports has a cap. So I connect one to the P port uh, here. The P port it has a pressure gauge, and that it line up. You can see the color. You can see pull back to push in, right? So I need to use. This finger to pull back, then push in. It has a spring built in. So I connect it to the motor. Now I can turn on the pump. You can hear that the motor start to run. The pressure right now is low. It's being adjusted by here. Right now it's not turning. All right. So you can see I I can start to knob on there. You can see yeah. You can see a little bit rotation on here. Right. You can see that. Uh, I hope I can zoom in uh, with later on. Right. Then, if I adjust more, you can see that motor turn really fast now. That means more and more oil come come out from the P port, right? So if I adjust the knob the other way, so you will have less and less oil. You can see slow down a little bit. Eventually, no more oil come out from the power pack. So that's why the motor stop. You can see the rotation, right? So I can turn off that. Right. So this is just a simple demonstration uh, for the hydraulic. Right. Okay. So let's move on to the other part of the uh, the trainer. Right. So this time I'm showing you the electrical controls. Right. So one part is the electrical controls. I already uh, talked about that at the beginning. Right. So those are the modules for electrical control. And in the same time, you can see there are two two uh, modules on here. P pay attention; those two with the green uh, big connectors, they are actually connected to the PLC. So that's a different uh, system. That's PLC. All right. So that's why you need to pay attention to those modules. They are different. So if you only use electrical. With the pneumatic system, so you have what we call electro pneumatic, and you can imagine that if you use electrical component work together with hydraulic circuit, you will have electro hydraulic system, right? And then uh, later on, at the like I said, the second half of the course, uh, we will start work with PLC, because with PLC you include all of those components in there. All right, so this is just uh, 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 the uh, the equipments available for the electrical and the PLC. And let's look at the next demo for electrical. So uh, again, those two are PLCs, right? So I'm using those uh, electrical uh, modules, and then on top, that's the power supply, right? So let's look at the demo. Those two box zero, box one are not uh, electrical. It's PLC. All right. So those are the electrical module. You can rearrange them. You can uh, put uh, that into different uh, slot. Right. Then this is the cable to connect for the electrical component. So the blue connect to the ground, and red connect to the 24, and then. I want to continue on the on the power, so connect those two modules together. So remember, you need to do that, right? Otherwise, the second module will not have a power supply. So uh, the cable I'm using is what we call banana cable, right? So you can use that to stack them, right? Uh, I'm not sure if I I forgot to demonstrate that, but uh, you will see that in the lab, right? So if you need uh, have a jumper. You can stack them. So now you can see I, I'm using a push button, right? Momentary. You can see that's normally open to control the light. So now I'm switching the to the normally close. When I turn the power, the light on right right away. But when I press, it turns off, right? Because it's normally close. And the bottom one is different button. So now you can see I need it. Turn off the power supply. Remember to do that, right? So that's uh, normally open, but it's maintained. You can see here. I don't need to hold the button, right? So 
I believe you should already learn those uh, difference on the previous circuit. So maintain normally open now is maintain normally close, right? It's on. When I press, it's off. Right. So those are the basic electrical concept uh, you need to understand. All right. So uh, let's look at the next one. Yeah. So. Uh, on this example, I'm trying to show you a very, very simple example uh, by combining the electrical control uh, with pneumatics. So with this type of system, you will see two uh, sections on the diagram. So you can see on top, you have the pneumatic circuit on top here, right? This one, you have a single acting cylinder, and that's a valve right on here. And at the bottom, you have the electrical circuit, right? So this is what we call IEC standard. Probably you already learned the NEMA standard from the previous course, uh, but this this is a separate, different standard called IEC. All right, those are re uh, symbols to represent the electrical component. So with the electro pneumatic, it's a very very important component. It's called solenoid valve. Again, uh, I will talk about more details on the lecture. But for now, on the diagram, you can see here, this is this symbol represented, and also labeled as Y1. And in the same time, on the electrical diagram, you can see there's a symbol also represent solenoid. So those are the pneumatic, then this is electrical, also labeled as Y1. So that's, that's the component, uh, like a bridge, or interface between the two systems. So other than that, you will have electrical devices, like push button, S1, that's a push button. You can press to make it close. And then you have a limit switch, S2. And that, that's a gap, right? You can imagine that's normally open, and that is installed at the extended position, because that's labeled S2, S2 on here, right? And then the indicator light is activated by the limit switch. So when you press the button, you activate the solenoid. And solenoid will in turn switch the pneumatic valve and then extend the sender. When sender extends to S2, that's being closed, and then start the electrical light bulb. So you will see the light turn on. Right. So this is a very simple circuit. Uh, let's see the operation on the next slide. All right. So I'll play that. So you can see I uh, have the electrical connect out here. This is the solenoid. This is black. It's solenoid two pores, and then I have the single acting cylinder. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So you can see uh, it's on there. You can see that two pores on there. So I first connect, this is a P port, connect to, you, you won't see that, I, I plug into the uh, manifold, right? And then I get another tube from the working port, connect to the cylinder. So you can see, I use the other end, connect to the cylinder. So similar to the push button, right? But this time the push button is on the electrical, right? So now I can use the cable similar to before, right? Use a button, maintain button. I'm not using that to control the light. Instead, I'm connecting that to the solenoid, to the power, and then to the ground. So when I press the button, solenoid will be energized. Turn on the pneumatic, turn on the power supply. Then when I press button, you can see the solenoid indicator light on and then the valve switch, cylinder extend. Right release, you can see here. So it's not a pneumatic control anymore. I use electrical button to control. Now I'm showing you the limit switch, similar to the roller, right, lower level, but it's not pneumatic, it's electrical. I, I use that to connect to the electrical cables. So I use that installed at the extend position. Right, so you can see there's a roller on here. The sender will push the roller to make open close on the limit switch. So now I need to use a cable, get a power to connect to one end of the 
limit switch. And then the other the other end going to the I change it to different the pilot pilot light, right? So then uh, let's see that, right? Extend, you can see the cylinder activate the limit switch and limit switch turn on the light. Uh, you have an indicate indication, right? For example, if you don't see the cylinder, right, the operator can only see the button and the indicator light. Right, the cylinder is somewhere inside the machine. There's no way you can see that visually, but if you can wire the circuit like that, right, you will have an indication uh, to tell you the cylinder is fully extended. Right, but still, you can see uh, this one is rely on the uh, physical contact of the limit switch. Right, uh, you can see you already see that uh, because of the physical contact over the time it can wear out very quickly. So that's why uh, in the next video I'm going to show you a sensor. Uh, with the with sensor uh, you don't have to have the physical contact, right? So that's, uh, let's look at the next one. Uh, let's no, not this one. Sorry, uh, that's different one. Let's look at this one. Yeah. All right. This is the sensor, right? So you can see 24 volt, zero volt. It's output three wire sensor on the symbol. So this particular one is called photo sensor. In the moment, you will see that similar to uh, some of the uh, sensors at the uh, garage door, right? If you have a, a sensor at the bottom of garage, garage door to to check the positions of the door, right? So I connect to the power and the signal. Now I'm connecting to the ground. Once I connect to the ground, you can see the sensor power on. You can see the light, right? You can see the light indicate the sensor is turning on. So you don't have to have the physical contact. It's you can also rotate, right? You can see rotate the head to different angle to check on the parts, all right? So you don't have to rely on the physical, right? Because mechanical contact uh, over the time can wear out very quickly. Instead, if you use a photo sensor or optical sensor, right? So you can have a very reliable connection without where uh, like uh, the physical contact. So you can see I put that into the extend position. Then I'll do the same thing, but uh, without the physical contact, right? You can see sensor detect the, the head of the cylinder, and then turn on the light, right? If I release button, cylinder retract, right? Okay, so this is the end of this lab, all right? So.